What's up everybody, Jared here with CarBuzz.com and today I am bringing you a deep dive review of the new Hyundai Ioniq 5. This is a dedicated electric vehicle from the Hyundai Motor Group. You might be familiar with the old Ioniq, which was kind of like a Prius rival. This Ioniq 5 is not related to that vehicle in any way. It is actually more closely related to the Kia EV6 and upcoming Genesis GV60. And it is the first in what will be a new lineup of Ioniq branded vehicles that will also include an Ioniq 6 sedan and, and a three row Ioniq 7 SUV among others. Now this car rides on Hyundai Motor Group's eGMP platform. I already mentioned the two other vehicles that ride on that same platform. It is an electric only architecture. So there are no gas powered versions of this architecture. So we do have the battery there in the floor. It supports an 800 volt architecture and some of the most interesting styling that you will see on any electric vehicle sold today. So let's go ahead and check that out. Starting with the Paramedic Pixel LED lights. These are probably my favorite element of the car. They're a little bit hard to see when they're not illuminated. Um, so I'll try to do it a little bit later on in the video. We'll try and pull into the parking garage and show you what these look like in the dark. They are like these square elements that almost look like they came straight out of an 80s video game. We have this very unique plain grill that is very different um, from any other Hyundai model that you might have seen um, in the past. It's very cool. This whole thing down here actually lights up in the dark. I will go ahead and bring it down there a little bit later and you'll get to see that a little bit better. Now the overall shape is very square, very boxy. It looks completely different from the Kia EV6, which is much sharper, much more heavily raked. If anything, I think it kind of reminds me of like the Lancia Delta Integrale, which is really, really high praise. I promise you, like, I love the way this Ionic 5 looks. It is absolutely gorgeous. And the size is a little bit deceptive when you see it and it's not next to anything. The wheelbase is 118.1 inches long, which is longer than the three row Palisade. But the overall length from front to back is actually 14 inches shorter than a Palisade. So basically what Hyundai has done here is they've pushed the wheelbase out as far as they can possibly go. There's not a lot of overhang on the front or the rear. And that gives this amazing passenger space, but it only takes up like a compact frame, which is really, really cool. We're testing the limited trim. So we've got these gorgeous 20 inch uh, aero wheels. I think they look fantastic. There's, I've not really seen any wheels quite like that. And then surrounding that you have sort of this gray finish with these cool sort of slash marks through it. And then you also have this cool trim down here on the fender. That looks really cool. You've got this angled bodywork on the door. There's just so much styling going on. Hyundai's designers really went to town on this car. I love the flush door handles. If you bring the key close up to the vehicles, these are going to pop out automatically, which is quite nice. You don't have to physically push it and then pull like some other electric vehicles like the Tesla Model 3. Now here at the back, we finish off the square styling. I think, again, it just looks so great. We have more of that silver accenting down here on the lower fascia. And then we have these square taillights that almost look like a Pac-Man video game with the Ionic 5 logoing there. No rear wiper, which is kind of interesting, um, even though this is sort of like a hatchback SUV. They call it an SUV. I think it looks like more of a hatchback. There is no rear wiper. We do have this very cool spoiler though uh, with an integrated brake light that is quite cool um, and we do have our little h-track badge that's the all-wheel drive badge because we have the dual motor version of the ionic 5 you can also get a single motor now while we're back here i might as well talk about storage space let's go ahead and open up our power tailgate we have a very nice amount of storage space back here 27.2 cubic feet of space now uh hyundai is quick to point out that the ionic 5 has more passenger volume than either the mustang mach e or the volkswagen id4 and the storage space is actually more than what you're going to get in this car's corporate sibling the kia ev6 because this is more of a square body we have this nice cargo cover here um, that you can use to cover all of your stuff here. Unfortunately, there's really not 
too much in terms of underfloor storage. That's really all you get. We have like a tire uh, kit there because we don't have a spare tire. But if you do fold down the rear seats, um, you do get about 70 cubic feet or maybe I think it's just under 60 cubic feet of space if you fold down uh, these rear seats, which unfortunately you can't do from back here in the cargo area, you're gonna have to go towards the rear seat. Now, this is not the only storage area that you get. You also get a little bit more storage up front, although it's not much, I will say. <laughs> uh, all of the EGMP cars have a very, very small front trunk up here. It's this little bin, basically. You're gonna laugh when you see it. Yeah, there's not much. It's basically enough for a charging cable, which is what I've put in there. Basically, this just stops the charging cable from taking up valuable space in the actual trunk. And before I show you the interior, I wanted to briefly check out what this car looks like at night because it is so cool. I already mentioned these Pixel LED lights. Look how awesome they look when they are illuminated. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the brightness settings down on the camera to hopefully give you a better look. Oh my God, it looks so cool. There's nothing else with a lighting signature like that. And now you can get a much better look at this car's almost like whisker-like smile that goes throughout the grill. I'll give you a full look at that. Look how awesome that is. It's fantastic. And then I can also give you a better look at the rear lighting signature as well. Again, super cool. Um, only sort of the outsides light up in red and you have like that little streak down at the bottom. Man, that is really cool. I can almost imagine Pac-Man just running across there. And while I'm on the outside in the dark, I should also mention um, that the Ionic 5 does get some really cool Hyundai specific features. You've got the Smart Pack, so you can drive it in and out. Uh, you can remote start it from here. And if you hold this button right here, you can open up uh, the charging port right here, um, which is not opening, I believe, because the car is on, but I promise that that is how you open it. Unfortunately, there's no like other good way to open it, at least not that I found. Let me know in the comments if there's some secret method to opening this, because I was not able to find it in my week of driving this car. So I already mentioned to you how this car has a massive wheelbase for its size, and that pays dividends here in the back seat because you do get a lot of space. I mentioned that you can fold the seats down from here. You can also recline them back uh, to get a little bit more comfortable. We've got this nice like ivory white interior. I think it looks great. You might not want this color if you have kids who are going to beat it up, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a seat down here. Now this seat is reclined back in its easy entry and exit function. So what I'm gonna do is slide over. You'll notice that we have a flat load floor here. Um, this is a little bit more representative of how much leg room I would actually have back here, which as you're gonna see is plenty. Now I can also recline my seat back. I can also slide it as well. We have got these little handles here. So this seat slides all the way up as you can see, and it does slide pretty far back as well. Um, so you can have either like a lot of leg room or just a little bit of leg room, which is quite nice. We've got these nice pockets here. We do have air vents here on the pillars as well. Because we have the limited trim, we've also got these nice sunshades, which is quite nice back here as well, as well as a massive glass roof. It doesn't open, um, but it does close, which is quite nice. You do have a shade that can completely cover this, and it is like an actual shade. I'll show it to you a little bit later when we get up to the front, so you don't always have to cook in the sun like you do in a Tesla, which is quite nice. You also have two USB chargers back here, um, so anybody back here can charge up their devices. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hop out now to show you the front. But before we do, um, you can kind of see, based on how this seat is reclined, you can see how far back that reclines. And I'll also give you a good look at like, how much these seats slide. Like, look at the difference there. That seat is like all the way up. This one is like all the way back. So there is quite a lot of flexibility here with this back seat. Now let's go ahead and check out the front seat where you're gonna be spending most of your time. And fortunately, it is a really nice place to sit as well. We've got these perforated uh, white seats up here with um, this nice kind of piping here. Also, it matches kind of the square elements that you get 
on the exterior of the car here on the interior. The detailing here is just absolutely gorgeous for a car of this price. I, I love it, it's fantastic. You also get a footrest, which is kind of an interesting thing. I'll show you that after I start the vehicle because it should pop up once I do. And look, just look at this door card, it's gorgeous. There's so much good stuff here. I forgot to mention that a lot of this is made from recycled materials like plastic bottles and stuff like that. So this is a very eco-friendly interior, but just look at these details. Like this is just the type of detailing work that you expect from like a Lexus or a Genesis product. Like it is just really, really nice detail here. Um, so let's go ahead and start it. We've got a normal stop start button, although it says EV stop start, because of course there is no engine. Fire up the AC, which I desperately need today. And then we can check out this rather fancy, rather premium interior here on this limited version of the Ionic 5. You'll notice that we don't have a Hyundai logo here. They did that as sort of like a styling element here. And we do have these standard uh, screens here. They're both 12 inches. This one is going to handle your gauge cluster information, and this one is going to be your main infotainment screen. They're pretty similar to what you're gonna get in other Hyundai vehicles, except the styling of this gauge cluster is just a little bit different. We do have paddle shifters here on this two-spoke steering wheel. They're gonna control the brake regen. I'll show you that a little bit later. And we do have a drive mode button here on the steering wheel as well. You can push that to cycle through eco, normal, and sport modes. Those are going to change the gauges up just a little bit and I'll talk more about that when we're out on the road as well. You've got a little bit of a weird shifter here jutting out of the steering column. You twist it forward for drive, backwards for reverse, and push P for park. You also get a really nice 360 degree camera here on, on this trim the limited version, which is quite nice as well. We also get a Bose eight speaker audio system here on this version as well. There are some fun things that you can play around with with the screen here. You've got access to different ambient lighting colors, which is, you know, nothing too crazy um, for what you know, you'd get in like a well-optioned Hyundai vehicle. We do have heated and ventilated seats, which are a little bit annoying because you have to access this, this menu on the screen. Unfortunately, there's no way to do that on the physical climate controls here, which is just a little bit annoying. I said that I'd uh, close that shade for you just to show you how dark it does get in here. Um, see, it kind of clamps there at the middle. I do like that you are able to close that, which is quite nice. And then other details on this car, just the overall cabin design is fantastic. There is so much openness here. It really feels like I just have space to sprawl out. Look, I can actually like stick my leg onto the passenger side because there is no like console here. This is a completely flat floor. We've got a little bit of storage down here with our 12 volt outlet and a USB. And I've got to talk about this movable island here. It's called the Universal Island Movable Center Console. It's a little bit of a long name, but it is very cool and very useful as I've found out in my week of driving the Ionic Vibe. So you've got a ton of space. You've got an armrest here that you can put up if you don't need. Um, so if you have some big item like a purse or something that you wanna put here, you can just put that up and then you can have quick access to your purse. There's also a little bit of storage in here as well. So you can put some useful stuff in there. You've got your two cup holders here. You've got some more USBs in addition to the one up there. You've also got a Qi wireless charger. I mentioned this massive storage area with this rubber mat that is uh, removable. And this whole area actually slides. So there's a little button up here on the front. Just pull it and you can slide this up this is this is its most forward position and then i'm going to go ahead and slide it back and now it's like a little bit further back so kids in the back can maybe have access to this uh it's very nice it just gives you like a lot of flexibility a lot of room and then the other thing that's really really cool here is this it is a footrest that you can have out while you're driving around and this seat is going to recline really far back not quite as far as you can get in the uh, Ford F-150 but look at that you can really just relax this is great if you're like charging and you have like a long charging session ahead of you you just want to relax you can open up the moonroof maybe gaze up at the sky that is a pretty cool feature that Hyundai put in uh, in this interior. So I am very, very impressed with the quality and design of this interior. It is one of the best Hyundai has ever done. And it's in fact, one of the best on the market today. 
All right, so now let's get the Hyundai Ionic 5 out on the road to wrap up our video. I'm also gonna talk to you about the different drivetrain options that you have, battery packs, charging times, all that good stuff in this portion of the review. So let's start with the battery pack. We've only got one option here in the United States, which is a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. That's pretty comparable to what you're gonna get in other EVs at this price range. Now you can pair that with either a single motor that's going to be rear wheel drive, so a single motor at the back, producing 225 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. That combination is going to get you from 0 to 60 in about 7.4 seconds, so not super quick. We've got the dual motor version, so you get a second smaller motor up at the front, combining with the rear to produce 320 horsepower and a whopping 446 pound-feet of torque. Now, that combination is much quicker. We're going to get from 0 to 60 in under four and a half seconds, and I showed you the drive modes while we were touring around, so I'm going to go ahead and put it into sport mode. We're going to come to a complete stop, and I'm just going to hammer the throttle. Ready? Woo there it is. Bit of delay right at the sec, at, right at the start, but ooh, then it just soldiers off. It is really quick, just like any electric car you've driven. The acceleration is ooh, instant. Really snaps your head back quick. This is not like a Tesla acceleration experience, but I think if you've driven any gas-powered crossovers in your life, a Toyota Rav4, even something like a Lexus RX, whatever, this is going to impress you with how quickly ooh, and how smoothly it accelerates. I absolutely love it. So in addition to those drive modes, we've got Eco, Normal, and Sport. Basically what those are really doing is changing the throttle position. So when you push the throttle in Eco mode, it doesn't give you all that much throttle response although the quickness is still there if you really did need it. In sport mode, it becomes much more immediate. You also have different levels of regen from the brakes. So I've been driving mostly on iPedal mode. That's the maximum brake regen. So if I take my foot off of the throttle, the car is going to bring itself all the way down to a stop using the regen, recuperating energy into the battery. And if I just come to a stop with no foot on the pedals, it will just stay here at rest. Now you can also put it in level three, which is like very strong, but not quite one pedal. You also have level two and level one if you just want a little bit of brake regen, or if you don't like the way that feels, maybe you've only driven an internal combustion engine car and you just don't like um, that brake regen, you can turn it off completely, in which case the car just coasts and creeps um, and behaves pretty much like a gasoline engine car, which is quite nice that you have the range. I like that Hyundai kind of made that an option. Now, in terms of range, we're going to go 256 miles with this dual motor version. If you don't need the extra power and you don't need the all-wheel drive, the rear-wheel drive version of this car can go just over 300 miles, about 303 miles in the single motor configuration. And the range is good. It's not the best range in the world. Like, you know, Teslas have a little bit more. Um, but it's very comparable. And the thing that Hyundai is really touting here is this 800 volt multi-charging architecture here. That allows the Ionic 5 to charge extremely quickly if you're on an Electrify America 350 uh, kilowatt hour plug. If you do find one of those plugs, the Ionic 5 can charge at a peak speed of 235 kilowatts, meaning you should go from about 10% battery to 80% battery in just eight 18 minutes. That's one eight. So you stop to pee, grab a Twix bar, come out, and your car's already at 80% by the time you're out. That is fantastic. This is one of the quickest charging EVs that you can possibly buy. You're going to add on that fast charger about 68 miles in just a five minute stop. And I really don't envision electric cars needing to be all that much quicker than that. Now, if you're charging at home and you have a level two charger, it'll take about six hours and 43 minutes to get fully charged. Um, and I should note that if you buy this car, you will get two years of free 30 minute sessions at Electrify America, which is a nice little deal. Um, so in terms of charging speeds, this is one of the best electric cars you can buy. And in terms of how it drives, it's one of the best electric cars you can buy. It's extremely comfortable in here, very quiet. I already talked to you about the acceleration. I would say that compared to the Kia EV6, which is this car's corporate twin, this one is tuned more for comfort. 
The steering is pretty lax. There's nothing crazy to it, even in sport mode. Um, I'm gonna push it around this corner here. There's plenty of body roll from the suspension, although because this is an EV with a low center of gravity, uh, with the batteries mounted low down in the floor, it's not quite as bad as some gas-powered crossovers you can buy, but this is definitely not a sporty experience. I think the EV6 is going to be the more enthusiast focus car, but I do think I prefer the styling and the interior of the Ionic 5 um, and its spaciousness over that Kia, but I do like how the Kia drives uh, just a little bit better. So if you are cross shopping the two, keep that in mind. Now there will be an N version of this car. That's Hyundai's sporty division that makes the Veloster N, the Elantra N. So the Ionic 5N is probably, this is still unconfirmed, but it's probably gonna have the same setup as the Kia EV6 GT, which has like 560 horsepower. It'll do zero to 60 in probably like three and a half seconds. It'll definitely, definitely get some stiffer suspension, some bigger brakes, uh, probably a limited slip diff, all those performance goodies. I'm really excited to try that out because this is already decently fun to drive with the amount of power it has. I can only imagine what putting over 550 horsepower is going to do to the experience. It's going to be absolutely crazy. But as it sits, if you're looking for a comfortable, efficient, quick charging EV, the Hyundai Ionic 5 is now one of my absolute favorites. All right, so that was the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Pricing for the base SE model starts at $44,000, and you do get a $7,500 federal tax credit from the government, but I don't really factor that into the cost, so you do have to be able to afford roughly a $45,000 car here. If you want the nicer SEL trim, that's gonna start at $46,250, or if you want the limited, which is what I've shown you here with all the bells and whistles, that's gonna cost $51,100. But if you want the dual motor variant, which is what we have here, that's gonna add the H-Track all-wheel drive. That's gonna to toss in an additional $3,500. As I mentioned, gets you a lot more power, but cuts the range a little bit. Um, it's also a little bit more expensive on the limited trim for some reason, so it's about $3,900 extra. So you're really gonna be spending over $56,000 all in if you want the nicest Ionic 5 uh, with the dual motor. Is it worth it? I think so. I think this is one of the best EVs that you can buy right now. I can't wait for the N version. If you want something that's styled different, maybe you just don't like the boxy styling, take a look at the Kia EV6. It drives very similarly, but a little bit sportier than the Ionic 5, but offers a lot of the same benefits. Now here's the big question. Would I buy this over a Tesla? Absolutely I would. I think the build quality is there. I think the styling is there. I think the range is just about what everybody needs in their daily commute and just look at it. It is so much better looking than those anonymous Teslas that are just everywhere right now. And if I were in the market for an EV, I think this would probably be the one I would take home and put in my own garage. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the 2022 Hyundai Ionic 5. For more videos like it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and visit carbuzz.com for more information about the Hyundai Ionic 5. I'll see you next time.